I'm Gordon Hamilton. I'm the designer of the board game Santorini, and I'm a mathematician. I believe in games in the home and in the classroom because games are a celebration of problem solving, and problem solving is at the core of a quality mathematics education. Today, I really wanted to highlight the difference between games that are good in the classroom and games that need to be played in the home. My game of the year for 2019 is a typical game that would be a total disaster if you had it in the classroom. That's because these pieces can get lost, these pieces can get crushed, um, it's, it, it takes too long, this is about a 90 minute game. So entirely inappropriate for the classroom. It's a great problem solving game, like all of the games that you're going to see today, but not good for the classroom. Let's contrast that with a game like Quirkle. Quirkle, I play this in kindergarten, grade one, grade two. I encourage it to stay in the classroom. It's a pattern rich game. You can see here that the rows and columns must either have all the same color or all the same shape. This is fantastic, a fantastic pattern game for kindergarten through grade two. Uh, it's perfect for the classroom because if you lose some of these pieces, that's okay. We don't mind about losing the pieces. The game is still totally playable. Uh, the pieces will last year after year after year. So this is a good investment for the long term, unlike the previous game that we looked at. Another great game for the classroom is For Sale. For Sale gets kids super enthused because of the absolutely perfect artwork. Here, they want to live in an outhouse. Not a great place to choose for, uh, um, to live, but they, if they can afford it, they could live in a, in a lighthouse or a cave. Obviously, this is the best one of all, to live in outer space, number 30. That's the best card in the deck. Uh, a tree house, number 11. So really beautiful artwork. The children are going to be buying this property and then they're going to be selling the property. Now, unlike uh, the official rules in the game, which have children needing to divide by two, so seven divided by two, what's that? That's too difficult for kids in grade one, grade two. So instead of that, you just have the winner, they have to lose all of their money and the loser doesn't lose anything. So that's a, that's a simplification of the game. You also don't need to play with all of the cards. You could say, we're just gonna do this for three rounds or five rounds. So the game can be customized to whatever length of time you have to play. I split the entire class up and I have teams, maybe five teams. And each time I just go around and I said, what do you wanna do? Do you want to buy a property or do you want to increase your bid to try to get the best property? You'll understand whenever you read the rules. Next game, patchwork. I want you to guess, is this a game that would be good for the classroom or not? You'll see lots of pieces here. This is a disaster for the classroom. This can be lost, these pieces can be lost, and the game would really suffer for it. So this is a two player game. It's suitable for the home. It's a great game for the home for two players. Whenever you're buying a game for the classroom, you also want the game not to be just good for two players. You want to have multiple players involved. That's gonna be cost effective for you. Next game. Here we have just dice. What do you think? Is this gonna be a good game? This is Liar's Dice or Perudo or Dudo. Do you think this is a good game for the math classroom, just looking at what we have here, or is this a game that will only work at home? This is a game that's perfect for the math classroom. It's perfect because if you lose some dice, well, these are cheap to replace. This is a really cheap game. It takes maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes to play. It's brilliant. These are all secret, so red does not get to see green, does not get to see blue. I would have the entire class split up into these three teams. So all of the red kids can only see these dice here. Brilliant introduction to probability before the kids experience it in the math classroom. Next game. This is Inversi. 
so is this going to be a good game for the math classroom? Or will it only work in home? This game is perfect for the math classroom, even though it's expensive and it's only a two-player game. And if you lose these pieces, the game will be wrecked. And the reason is it's indestructible. I've, I've had kids try to break this game. It's not going to work. There's only 10 pieces, so they're, they're actually really hard to lose. These, game, these pieces are all 48 cubic centimeters, so that's an interesting connection with the grade five curriculum. And the rules are relatively simple. One of the great things about this game, it only takes five minutes to play. So you can play the game, pick it up, play it again, pick it up, play it again. And there's some really nice uh, um, questions that can link into the curriculum. I'm going to put a link uh, uh, at the bottom of this video so that you can see uh, my video that specifically addresses Inversi, a really cool game. Next game. The last game I'm going to talk about today is Hanabi. Most of the games, all of the games that we've talked about so far, are competitive games. But sometimes it's really fun for your whole class to be on the same team and to be against the board game. In this case, Hanabi is the enemy. We're all trying to beat Hanabi. A team sees only the other player's cards or dominoes, not their own. But they have to play their own. And it is your job to give hints to other people so that they play those cards in the right order, so that they play those dominoes in the right order. For example, right now, I'm going to give a hint to the blue player that these are both blue. Now, I really want the blue player to play this onto the playing board because this is the next firework that's needed. We've got the one already, but we need to have the two here. These fireworks go from one to five, and if you ever mess up, then you've lost a life. And those lives are for everybody. You're all on the same team. So the whole class is on the same team for this board game. Really awesome game, as are all of these games that you see today. So enjoy. Enjoy playing at home. That is the number one responsibility of the parent, because most games cannot be played in the classroom. That is the number one job of the teacher whenever you're talking to parents. Really get them to understand that board games are as important as reading. They teach so many things to kids. They teach kids resiliency in the face of failure. They teach kids about problem solving and really playing hard and thinking hard. That's really what we want in the math classroom and board games in the home. That's the best way to support it.